Howdy, me Flow Bart here, and welcome. All right, after yesterday's fiasco of a couple of videos that had no video in the video, hmm, go figure. I want to get a couple of quick videos out today. Um, the one we did earlier was um, creating a simple health bar and a way of testing our health system so that we know that we can lose health and gain health in the simplest fashion. Um, especially for a single player game, this is good enough for a lot of uses. But let's go ahead and create a teleport system. And another really simple th thing to do, if you've never done it before, you don't know how to do it, what have you, it's a lot easier than it, it seems. We're going to keep the project we had earlier, and let's go ahead and set up some method of teleporting. So what is a teleport? Essentially, it takes our character and goes from point A to point B. So let's go ahead and create a new blueprint, actor, teleport, base. In case we want to modify something else to it later. Uh, we can add a component, same thing we did earlier. We're going to add a cube. We're going to size it to the Z of 0.1. We're going to add a box collision, and we're going to change it to, come on, thank you, 1.5 by 1.5, raise it up, compost, save, go into our event graph, we're not going to need any of this stuff right here, again, compost and save, box collision, right click, on component, begin overlap. And what we're going to want to do is the same thing we did with the other ones. We want to cast to our player. So for me, it's going to be cast to player underscore base. And we are going to teleport them to uh, a new location. So first off, um, we need to know where we're going to send our character. So how do we do that? Um, well, I'm going to put the teleport pad, and it doesn't matter where you put it in the map, it's going to be fine where we place it, but I want them to land right up here. Alright, so the easiest way I would say to do this is grab a basic shape, sphere, place it down, go to your details panel, and you can see your XYZ Try changing our Z to the zero. We're at 630 on our Y, and let's go with 500 on our Z height. You always want to go a little bit higher on your Z height for the location of where you're going to teleport to, um, just simply because, well, you don't want your character to accidentally be in the ground. And for the sake of my OCDs, let's make it simple. Zero, six, negative 600 and 500. So what we want to do here is set actor location and it is this and our new location is going to be our zero negative 600 and what did I say 500? Yes. 500, compile, and save. Now, this needs to go away because we no longer need it. And we can take this teleport base and shove it anywhere on the map. Now, if we walk over here and, and it's there. All right. Thanks for watching. See you later. No, just kidding. Um, I'll be too short of a video. But it, the simplest form of a teleport is just that. You're setting the actor location. Um, I'm looking this way, and I'm going to continue looking this way. What if you don't want your character to be looking this way whenever you get out of the teleporter? Well, I kind of do. Um, but let's just say that we want our character to be looking in that direction. But I enter from this direction, it's going to have me going this way. What if I want my character going this way? So that when we teleport here, now we can continue on with our path of where we're going. 
So if we go this way, we're facing this way. Whatever direction we face going into the teleporter, it's going to translate because we only set our location and not our rotation. So let's go back in here and instead of set actor location, let's delete that and let's go with set actor location and rotation. So now we had our, our zero, negative 500, and that's wrong. Um, <laughs> I forgot what I said my uh, <coughs> location was. Uh, yeah. Negative 600. Negative 600. A new rotation. Now, it's X, Y, and Z. Um, okay, so if we look at our map, it's pointing that Y is going in this direction right here. So, if we change the Y to 90, what happens now if we come in here and we go into it on this direction? Huh. That's different. I don't think that's exactly what we want. So, let's zero that back out. Try it in our Z. Is that going to work for what we want? Yes. So let's go ahead and enter it from this direction. And now it didn't rotate our camera as well, but that's okay. Um, it put our character in the right direction. Um, it'd be nice if it changed our orientation for our camera as well. But this is going to at least get our character facing in the uh, our character itself in the right direction. So no matter which way we go into it, what about oh we don't want to accidentally run off. So as we're running, sprinting full force, we go in here. Oh okay no no problem. But what if we're running this direction full force and then uh, oh damn we're dead. So to kind of keep from overshooting to kind of freeze the character in place just a little bit. Um, what I would say is probably after this right here, um, set movement mode for character movement, and just make it look nice. It's already defaulted to none, and that's good. Gonna put a delay of two seconds just to force us to stop our character because when we do teleport we want to be able to um, control C and control V pause ourselves for just a moment so we don't accidentally get carried away and just run right off the damn edge because that's something that I would do get carried away we'll put it back to walking at this point so now we're out here, we're running full force. Uh, okay, we're trying to get to the checkpoint, and uh, okay. Notice our feet were underneath the ground here, so it's something that I didn't notice before. So that just tells me that my teleport, I need to change my Z height to 510. What happens if we're above the ground when we teleport? after our, our brief pause we fall back down again so we, you can try to get it as close to perfect as possible 505 and that would be best but you could also um, put it even higher if you want still looks pretty good so now we can move again it's almost unnoticeable we were about one above so I'll change it to 504 that should be pretty good 
if you put it higher, um, your character is going to be hovering in the air, and then boop, would fall down, and then you're able to go. I'd actually say 5 well, 3.5 would be even better. So we still fall down a small amount. But it's still, it's not very noticeable. If you're in a hurry trying to get somewhere, and uh, okay, oh, all right. Gives you a second to get your camera in order and be able to keep on going. So it's a really simple system for setting up a teleport. Um, I mean, it is the absolute simplistic way. Um, what I have done in other projects, and let's do save all. Let's close our teleport base. Um, I'm actually going to close this project completely because I think the other one was in um, 420, and that was just in 422. Um, not sure if this was it or not. But what I had before was a throwable teleport system. So you could, just like you throw a hand grenade, uh, you could pull out, a, let's say, a, a special launcher, the teleport launcher, and it throws a disc out. And wherever the disc stops is where the uh, your new destination is going to be. Same thing if you're shooting something, you you can use a line trace, you can use it as a throwable item like a grenade or things of that nature, and you're able to go in there and just have a ball. Map, test map. Yeah, I think this is it. So I'm going here and play, I'm going to teleport, Boop. I'll put a delay in there so uh, um, You've got a little camera right there to show what's going on. So if you come over here and fire, you have a disc that goes out, and you see it has a little effect there. Now when you right-click, you teleport. So when you're in, in this mode right here, wherever this disc lands, when it goes poof, now you can teleport to that location. And you can use teleport for all kinds of stuff. Yay, I finally got it up there. So now I can teleport to on top of here. Um, if I want to teleport, what happens if I teleport on top of a teleport? I can keep shooting these discs out. It's close. It's close. Now well, let's teleport to there. And right now, with the way this one's set up, you can't sit there and spam it. There's a delay on it. So I teleported through my teleport disc to a teleporter, and there we go. So, yeah, it looks like a coin, but, you know, you can make it look like, like whatever you want. Um, essentially, all I did with that one was, let's go into our character, blueprint, player base, and set up a simple line trace. So when I hit the F key, um, I hit the F key. At the V, go in here. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that's not what I want. Why do I have that in there? Interesting. Okay, so, um... Yeah, I want to press the one key. Spawn actor magic box. Okay, that's not what I wanted. I don't know half the shit I got in here. Um... There we go. And apparently I was trying to do this in multiplayer. Because we have this set up as multicast and reliable with a couple inputs that pass through on it. And you can either do this and add a plus, add your things manually, or you can drag this over to here. It'll automatically add a pass-through pin. Um, so it checks the... the Puck launch location. What I'll do is I'll hold by these individually. And this is the area that we're going to be focused in on. So we'll start with this one. Client throw TP. Or sorry, client throw teleporter. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it here and let you look at it. You can pause the video and copy along. 
but I'll explain things of what they're doing. Um, it asks if we're using our crosshair. I have a crosshair system. If you don't, then you can forget that. It asks, can you shoot? Okay, that's these are other variables that I have in here for specific of what I'm doing in mine. Um, it asks, can you shoot? Yes. Now it's setting it to no, so you can't spam, in other words. And we're spawning an actor. You see I've got these pass-through pins, okay? Again, those are the class coming from here, and you'll see where those come from in just a moment. So you'll be able to connect these across. The spawn transform, you'll see where that comes from in just a moment as well. Um, owner and instigator, again, on spawn actor you can just drag these across to here and just let them ride. After the spawn actor, we we'll put in a delay, and I have a variable for puck launched, and then I set it to where you can shoot again. Okay. So, new location, it's getting the new location based on the puck location. So, new location is just being passed through right here. So, set actor location is just right here. Was puck launched? If yes, then we'll go right there. Then after it sets the actual location, it turns off that variable. This isn't the best way to show how to do things, but this is something that I've already created and just sharing that with you. And then, by the way, this is client TP to puck. It's multicast and reliable. These were custom events. All right, so this next part, server teleport to Puck. It's just running through a switch as authority. It goes to that custom event, which is client TP to Puck, which was back over here. Again, these are just passing right through. And then over here, right mouse button is what I'm using to trigger it. Um, target itself. I'm not sure why there was two targets in there, but um, TP puck location plus 100 so that it puts you above the ground, so you're not in the ground when you teleport to there. Not really sure what the hell this was. Um, or that. So the actual gadget, the teleport projectile, on event begin play, whenever it's spawned, it's the same thing as event begin play. Set lifespan, 2.8 seconds. What's that happening, brother? Um, I set a, a delay of 2.5 seconds, which is slightly before that actually goes away. We're setting the puck location here and then we're going to pass this through and set it also in the player. So we get the world location of where the puck is located now. And my puck is just that. TP underscore puck. So that's that variable right there. All I did was dragged it in here. And we get our world location for it and we set that variable there. And then we're just going to pass that directly to here so we get player character, cast to player base, which is my player character. We set its variable for the TP puck location. We're going to spawn an emitter, which was the explosion, and then the sound was the explosion cue. The location was just based off of the puck location. Again, it's all just passed through. Uh, let's see here. Um, that's just a regular teleporter base. So again, if we go back in here, and we do, we're do, we not in our first person mode, so I hit V to change my first person. We now have a crosshair. Now I can left click, and I can shoot the puck out. Whenever we see the emitter, we can now right click and teleport to that location. And by doing the, the plus 100, it allows our character to be above ground so we don't get stuck. I don't know why I even put that camera in there. 
but the camera is actually displaying on that screen right there. So if I come over here and go to the Sybil teleporter and go to here, we can see we're on the screen. Yay! And there was much rejoicing. Uh, <laughs> Where the hell did you go? That one, they're falling to the ground. Uh, I don't know why that happened. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I was working on something for somebody else, and I, I wanted a deployable um, teleporter. They wanted to know about teleport, so I started messing with teleports and just came up with this simple deployable um, teleport system. Yay. So again, I can throw that one out there. And, well, that's not where I want to go. I want to go over here. I want to be in this square. Uh, that one didn't land there. And that one went through the ground. I don't know why they're going through the ground. Yep, that's not where I want to go. So, okay, that's where I want to go. I want to be on that square. And now, whenever I teleport, I'm there. Wherever that puck lands, it puts me there. Whenever I, I right-click. So, until I actually right-click... I don't teleport and say I don't want to teleport there yet. I'm there, but now when I right click, my puck was still here. So if I throw a puck here, that's my new teleport location. Okay? If I right click and there I am. What happens if I right click again? Nothing, because I've used that teleport up. So I'm going to throw a teleport puck out there in front of that. I'm going to use this teleporter and they're independent from each other. So now if I right click, it still saved that one in there for me. So if I right click, I'm going to use that stored location from my hockey puck, or my teleport puck. So you can kind of use that however you want. Um, put that wherever you want. Use it if you want. Don't use it if you don't want. But you can use simple teleports like that. And I showed that in the first part of the video. Or you can expand it to where you're attaching that location. What it's doing is it's gathering that location from wherever this thing lands. You could also do it as a line trace and say, okay, wherever my crosshair is, whenever I left click, that's where I want to trigger my spawn location, or where I, I spawn to. So you could do it any kind of different way you want. Um, I like that. Um, it reminded me of something from Unreal Tournament uh, where you have this launcher where you or this disc. You throw the disc and wherever that disc lands is where you're, you can teleport to. And what it did was it actually instead of it waiting for you to right click well damn it would you get up there? Damn it you suck. And it fell off again. So if you're trying to get to a cool sniper location, there we go. You could use that as a teleport system to get to a cool sniper location. Another thing, this would also kick ass if you combine this with um, uh, jetpack, and you combine this also with um, launch pads. And I'm going to do a couple short videos. Get ready to wrap this video up because this accomplished everything that I need to do on this video. I'm going to try to wrap these videos up around the 20 to 30 minute mark so that more people can watch them and watch all the way through them. It's going to help me by getting my view times up. Um, I'm getting close to the 1,000 sub mark, and um, I'm also getting to the point where I've got my view time where I can reapply for monetization. Um, if I choose to monetize my videos, it's going to be a, um, ads at the end of the video only if I can manage that. Meaning, whenever I say thanks for watching, then essentially you know that there's getting ready to be an ad, and you can cancel out at that point. Yeah, and see, that's the thing with um, developing, like throwing it like a. And that essentially is what it is. I mean, if I shoot this straight up in the air, it has an arc, it's, it has velocity, um, but also has a time built onto it. So even though I just fired it, it's up in the air, where it goes, poof, that's where my teleport is. But it does have an arc. It, it is 
dealing with gravity. So if you want to change that gravity, um, that essentially is done in the player character or wherever you're saying for it to do um, so my view change. The way I do my view change is um, I hit V, I manage a flip-flop, and I create custom events for first-person view and third-person view. And then I add a third-person camera. Most people don't like my camera system because I attach it to roughly around the head location. But, you know, it's the way I do it. It works for me. Um, you can deactivate and, and activate. Again, like this, you can just pause the video and copy this as you see it. Um, using crosshair, it's just adding a widget to the center of the screen, um, which is handled by this event here, which is a custom event here. Um, yeah, there is a way of doing that. I just, I've never done it before. Um, to put like a, um, I prefer the chance. Like, oh shit, I went in the wrong spot. I prefer it that way because it's a, a game of chance. But, um, I do also like games that show you the prediction point of, and draw something on the ground to show you where your grenade's going to land. So I do like that also. And I will probably do a video on that later on. Um, where's my left click, right click? Am I just missing out here? Got all that on my view change. F, which I don't even know what the hell I was doing with this. <laughs> so that doesn't do anything. And 1 doesn't do anything. Um... Yeah, oh, there we go. Right mouse button is there. That's all I did with that. Where the hell was the left mouse button? Oh, right there. Um, so yeah. Uh, server throw. When I press the left mouse button, it's going to server throw TP. Which then you read back through this. The spawn actor. Um, yeah, I'm confusing myself here. But yeah, I'll look into doing um, the 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 predict method because a lot of people do want to use that, and it's sorcery. <laughs> so, Hit the V key, go into my first person mode, see I got my crosshair. I can right cl left click to deploy it, right click to go to where it lands. So what you're saying is basically where my crosshair is now, say if that was a circle. If I go to fire, I go into that, that mode, like I hold down the, the left mouse button, and instead of it automatically launching it, it draws a circle out, and wherever that circle is at that point, it's going to get that location and store that location as my teleport location. So yeah, you could do it like that, and I will look into that. Um, may not get a video up tonight of that, but honestly, I think that'd be a cool way to do it. I, like I said, I, I, I'm like this. If you're in the middle of combat and you're trying to, oh no, that wasn't quite it. Um, oh, that's perfect. There we go. So, yeah, make it one of those things where you got to do it on the fly. I'm like, oh crap, I got to dodge this guy. And, oh, well, that guy's shooting at me. Oh no, I got to go. Oh, oh, I got to get out of here. Oh, thanks. Whew. All right, now I'm gone. So you could use it and you know have that oh shit factor and <laughs> the pucker factor. But you have the option of well, I don't want to use that one, so I can shoot it again, and. I don't want that one. We'll try there. Nope, that was close. See, so if you have the ability to, yeah, go ahead and... Oh. Let it break. Yeah, um...
showing the arch as well. That's um, I have seen that done, uh, but it's been quite a while. And that's something we'll definitely have to look into. It'll be great for for some things, but I'll look into it for you. Um, so this is the way that it, that I wanted this one to work, and it works the way that I wanted it to. Um, it could be a little bit better, but yeah. Love throwing these cameras in. See, this is the downfall of using the camera the way that I've got it. It's fine here, and it's fine going forward. But occasionally going backwards looks a little bit weird. I don't remember if I actually tested this fully in um, multiplayer. So, let's um, just quickly look at that, and I'll clear out of this video. And I'll see if I can come up with something else for another video for tonight. Just to kind of make up for last night's fiasco. Uh, let's see here. We'll do that. Alright, so this is the client on the right side. And if client goes into first person view. And let's do it right over here. Shoots the puck out. Alright, so I, I didn't finish doing this one for, for multiplayer. It still needs some tweaks for multiplayer. But it's not what I really was developing it for. Uh -huh. It's weird is that I can actually hit somebody with it. Yeah, it's working good for client. Uh, server, just I don't have it finished for um, multiplayer. Alright, so we're going to wrap up this video. And um, if anybody has some suggestions for more of the simple series like this, um, I'm going to do one more simple series as soon as I figure out what I'm going to do. <laughs> and then um, I, I will take requests, probably on Discord, um, for... Uh, the simple series, being able to do quick videos, 20, 30 minute max, so that um, I can get in, show what it is I'm trying to show, and be done with it. So, shorter videos, um, which I actually, I need to go ahead and do a video to explain where I'm going with the channel here, and yes, I'm going to be doing a lot more Unreal Engine 4 stuff, uh, but I'll try to do some other things too, but I'm going to do another video, actually I think the next video that I do I'll have a project up, be screwing with something, take questions, kind of goof off and hang out, do like kind of a, an evening after show, and explain where I'm going with the channel so that I can grow for myself and help grow for you guys. So that you guys get the information you want and an easier way to, to get it. Um, and it allows me to monetize my videos and not... I. I hate ads. I know everybody hates ads, um, but that's how people make money on YouTube for the most part. Um, I have received a few donations here and there, and those are always appreciated. Um, currently only use um, PayPal for right now. If I have enough interest in Patreon, I'll reactivate my account, but I shut down my Patreon account. I got screwed with merchandising through that, so I'm not going to do that again. Um, I'm also going to be working on my my swag store. Um, I do currently have the um, the Beeflo Bart uh, mouse pads. And let me actually. I don't think I have in here. Um, yeah, I don't have a camera set up for this particular one. But I do have a mouse pad. Um, it is on... Uh, I had linked it on, on Discord. Let me see if I can get my camera to come up. They changed this software around so much, and I don't like it. Um, to where I could actually modify my scene on the fly and still see everything else. So I'm, I don't like the, the new layout. If 
I do this. Yes, I'm not wearing a shirt. Sorry. Um, the mouse pads. This one's a little bit dirty because I use crap out of it. Um, it's a gel type, and there's also just a, a regular square type. The actual piece of the mat comes out, so it's easy to clean. Um, in fact, I, since I've had it on my desk, this is the first time it's actually come loose. You would think that it's not glued down or anything, that it would be a problem, but I've never had any problems with it coming loose. But it's got the, um, the Beefalo Bart logo, if you guys can see that. One of the, the Beefalo Bart logos. I kind of like that one. So it's like the, the Beefalo just kind of ripping out through the, uh, the pad itself. Pretty good print resolution. Um, I like the way it came out. So, yeah, let me switch back to uh, out of view because I don't want to like scar people for life with me not wearing a shirt right now. A little on the hot side. I've been going back and forth between sweaty periods and whatever. Yeah, we're not going to go into that right now. But yeah, that mouse pad. Uh, I will cover that on on the the next video. There's two different mouse pads on there. I'm going to do some more shirts and things of that nature. I only make a, a dollar or two off of these things, but yeah, they're cool. You know, so all, all you know that I don't have any income. This is my source of income is doing stuff on YouTube and, and what have you. So I'm going to take a break for a little bit and we'll come back and I'll actually do like an after show, take questions and answers and then explain what I'm doing with the channel and where I'm going. All right, guys, we'll see you in just a minute. Thanks for watching.